Hello there, Biaka Muse this when welcome to my review of Kingdom Hearts. Uh, so for the ones who follow me on social media know that the, the past year I was playing Kingdom Hearts 1 uh, on the PS2 uh, because me and my boyfriend had bought the games uh, in their physical format and I tried to play them in the PS2. I actually uh, did quite a lot. I don't remember if I did that game on beginner mode or not. I think I did. I, th I think I played all the Kingdom Hearts in uh, uh, the ones that I've played so far on beginner mode because uh, we all know how these RPGs are in terms of difficulty. I played it uh, in the beginner mode, I think, and I was only able to reach uh, until the Riku uh, slash Ansem boss because he was a, a total spammer and I just couldn't get past him. I tried that boss, I lost really the number of times uh, that I tried it on the PS2, but I played because me and my boyfriend also bought for the PS4 the all-in-one pack so we could play all the games that are available and I finally finished the, Kingdom, the first Kingdom Hearts in the PS4. I really love the experience. Uh, now I'm able to do a comparison between the one of in the PS2 and the one in PS4 and they really um, upgraded the everything. The, the graphics are basically the same, they are just a little bit remastered for the PS4, it's a bit more fluid also the gameplay, uh, but it's really helpful how the um, how the controls and everything were uh, made into the PS4 because in the PS2 well I also basically played the game up until Riku in the PS2 like um, in a very hard mode even in beginner mode because I didn't quite understand the the thing with the ability points uh, so I basically had all the abilities and the ability points to spend and until Riku I didn't spend any of them. So I played all the game, basically, all the worlds and all the bosses without having any abilities. And I think that in itself, it was stupid of me and also I'm quite proud because I didn't think I would make it so far without having those abilities. But then again, I didn't know how to use them because I must have ignored it in the tutorial or something. Uh, so basically I had no abilities. Playing through uh, a second time in the PS4 was a totally different experience because I already knew what to count. I didn't do anything that much different from the, the first playthrough that I did on PS2. But I'm really happy because I was able to do all the cups, uh, all the cups except for the gold match and the platinum match. I did try both of them at least one time, but it's, it's, it's just too much. I saw someone because I thought a ah, platinum match must be more difficult than the gold match and I tried to see a, a playthrough of someone defeating the Ice Titan for the gold match and you basically have to reach levels like 99 to have the, the HP necessary to survive that thing so no, I'm not going to do that because I'm the kind of, of person that tries to do the most of the game that I can uh, within the story. I'm not one of those that's fanatic about uh, uh, completing 100% the game. I, I just try to do the most of it. Uh, the, so Because the matches also uh, helped level up, so I was quite proud to get the trophies and everything. But uh, I won't do the. I won't return to the game to do the gold match or the platinum match. As fun as it would be to defeat Sephiroth and the Ice Titan, I basically finished the game at levels around 59, 60, I think. 
Uh, I tried on the PS4 for the first time Essence Boss. It was not as hard as I thought uh, it would be. Then again, after my experience with Riku slash Ansem on the PS2 and watching that cutscene, because in the PS4 you can skip it, but in the PS2 you are forced to watch the cutscenes and it was really painful. Uh, also, in my first playthrough, I got stuck on Tarzan's world because I chose to advance to a level 1 world, which was Alice, to a level 3 world, uh, which was Tarzan's world, and that was a big mistake because I was uh, stuck on Clayton for a very long time. Uh, but now, uh, in my PS4 playthrough, I did the worlds for their uh, levels, and it was much easier. About the story, I really like Kingdom Hearts' story. I think if they had left the game as it is in the first game, it would be a full, complete story and I would be okay with it. Um, the story is really well distributed throughout the world. You have the plot of the Princesses of Light, that are necessary to open the, the door and everything and the plot is really good. I feel like they really uh, do a good job at fitting in the Final Fantasy characters as well as the Disney characters and then the original characters are really likeable. I really like Sora. I think he's a very enjoyable character. Kairi I still have a kind of love-hate relationship with Kairi because I think she has a good design, she's a character that I really want to like, but at the same time, and this is also related to what uh, they do with her character throughout the rest of the games, I think she's really wasted because they do such a nice setup for her and then it doesn't go anywhere. So it's a bit frustrating. R about Riku, I love his design. Of course, he doesn't have... he's here just to be the antagonist or the friend that was lost to the darkness and he's getting better through the games. Uh, set, for me, Riku, uh, at the moment, I don't know, I don't. I wouldn't say that I like him more than Sora, but I really enjoy his character and his design. Everyone knows I have... Uh, I really like white-haired, although, although it isn't really white hair, it's some kind of light purple. Uh, but yes, he's a really interesting character and I really like his design. Again, I like all the designs of the original characters. I like the involvement of the Final Fantasy characters, although I can see there's a preference for Final Fantasy VII because you have Aerith, you have Sid, you have Yuffie, and then in the next games you'll have more. Uh, and there's really these preferences. You also have here Tidus and Waka, but they are the small children on the island, so I don't really count them. I really enjoyed visiting the worlds because uh, they did really well at keeping the, the Disney story of the worlds but also making it, uh, modifying it with little twists so that you can feel like it's the same story but with the, the characters like Sora, Donald and Goofy well uh, molded into it and with some twists so you are you don't feel like the story is being disrespected about these Disney worlds but you aren't also bored with the fact that you already know the story so they did quite a good job at keeping the story as well as slightly modifying it so that Sora, Donald and Goofy can feel natural intervening in the world and that's a really positive thing. About the bosses, I, I really uh, feel that I did the game without any difficulties. Yes, I played in beginner's mode and fortunately I died very few times, 
while I was stuck on Clayton's boss because I did that mistake of jumping to a, a three-star world, um, it was really easy to defeat. I also was smart enough to this time change equipment, be more attentive to that, uh, really distributing ability points, uh, making sure that Donald and Goofy were really focused on support and everything because uh, the AI changes a little in the, in the games and it's really a, it's a really fun story I really enjoy doing it I'm sad that I wasn't able to do the world of Winnie the Pooh because well you have to basically collect all Dalmatians from what I've understood to be able to collect all the, turn, the torn pages so you can do Winnie the Pooh's world and I was sad because I wanted to complete that world but once again I'm not going to return to all worlds doing more grind just so I'm able to use all the trinities and be able to find all Dalmatians it's not that it's bad, but I think it's a, a really... It's not a very interesting mechanic for me. Uh, I think the torn pages should be easier to find so you could complete uh, Winnie the Pooh's world because when you go to Kingdom Hearts 2, you feel like you're missing something because Sora really has this deep and caring connection with Winnie the Pooh. I'm really happy with my playthrough. I'm happy that I only died four times before defeating Riku and uh, seeing the rest of the story. I like all the worlds. I really enjoy the end of the world because it has such a, an infinite vibe, like some kind of void or universal feeling and it's really interesting. I was a little bit worried because you basically have to do straight to the end uh, all the bosses once you reach the, the final stage because Ansem has like three or four parts, I, j I don't remember quite well, but it wasn't that difficult. I think I died, what, one time in one of those, maybe the the third or something part. Uh, I just died one time and had to do that once again, but it was uh, quite simple um, and I think it's a, a really strong game and once again I think it wouldn't need to create a franchise on its own. I enjoyed the rest of the games and I hope to analyze them in future reviews but it's I think it would be a really good solo game. I will add that I started a uh, rechain of memories but I think that is going to be a long time before I review that game because I played uh, quite a bit until Larksin and Larksin is terrible, it's like my hate for screwball and I don't like that spammer and I'm stuck because the, the mechanics of gameplay are also horrible. It's not horrible when you're playing the worlds in itself and destroying Heartless, but it's horrible when you have a boss such as Larksin and for now I'm stuck. So it's going to take quite a while for, for that to end and I hope to soon do a review of Kingdom Hearts 2. So tell me what you think about Kingdom Hearts 1, tell me what are your favorite moments, tell me what is your favorite soundtrack because the music in Kingdom Hearts really is amazing. They have common themes on games and then they have the, the themes that are inspired in each world and they are so uh, catchy and so well done that most of the time I would just sing along while I would be playing. So uh, tell me what you think about this game, tell me what you think about 
other entries in the Kingdom Hearts franchise and may your heart be your guiding key. See you!